Hey, what's up everybody? Jason here. In this video, I'm going to give you some real quick advice that'll save you a ton of time and a lot of headaches. Now, I'm going to begin with a quick story to kind of give you a little bit of context here. So, I knew this developer who was working on a role-playing game, just a standard RPG, and one of the mechanics that they were going to add in was a jump mechanic. So something where you could jump from one area to another and you know, kind of just navigate around the world. Now, he was a good programmer, so he had the core mechanic up and running in, I think, a couple days. I think it might have been two days before you were able to jump from one rock to another and then continue on to your combat and do that all while you were fighting and stuff. As a good programmer, looking at his code and thinking, oh, I could probably make this a little bit better. Hopped into the profiler, saw there were a couple allocations and some things going on, and spent the next week optimizing this jump code so that it would jump and land perfectly. By the time he had finished optimizing it, he committed it, got into the next call with the designers. Uh, they told him that they were no longer doing that type of jumping and they just wanted a simple point and click jump where you click and it, it teleports across with an ability instead. So no more free form jumping. They didn't like that mechanic. It was uh, not, not a great idea. So that week that he had spent optimizing, of course, was blown and of course morale for that was yeah, I've, I heard the story and plenty of stories like this multiple times. This happens all the time and it's a side effect of really just wanting to do really good and prematurely optimizing. So let me give you the steps that I follow and that I've found extremely useful to avoid that but still make sure that you're getting everything that you need done. It's a simple phrase that I picked up from a friend who I believe was quoting Kent Beck from Test Driven Development and it's the make it work, make it right, and make it fast. That might sound overly simple but let me give you a quick example of what this means and how you can apply it. So in this game, one of the core mechanics is that you can switch between characters. So here we go, I jump in game and I hit, you know, like I'm a dragon, I hit W, I go to a mushroom and a beetle and a little uh, bandaged dude, this is the, the moth, let's kill these guys off or maybe drag them over to a tower. But when I switch between them right now in the initial version of it, I'll show you in just a second, I just spawn a new version of a model and destroy the old one. It works. And this is the code. So I get a message from the server, that's right up here, saying to change the model, this is a networked game. And then it tells the character model to change by calling this set character model. That destroys the existing model, finds the new model that I want by index here. This model is actually an index, and this is kind of the make it work, not right, but work. And then it's got the model being instantiated on 312 here. It finds the animator child, and then it binds up this character class has a character animator that deals with setting the triggers and all those things. So it binds that up and then activates the new model if it's not, if it's inactive, just in case sometimes my prefabs end up being inactive. So it turns them on and this, this works. It does the job, gets things done. There are a couple issues with it though, and the step of making it right, at least my version of making it right, would be to go in and fix some of those issues without worrying about the performance. And that's easy to do with this. You can scroll down and see the set character model right. The first thing it did is just change that model to be ID, to cleaning it up, refactoring it, and making it actually be the thing that it's supposed to be. And then the next part, the most important part of making it right, is actually validating things, making sure that we've got a correct ID or an index that's not out of range. If we do have one out of range, we need to know what we want to do with it. Either log an error and return it or set some default. Here I just go with an error and return. We definitely don't want to just do nothing though and throw an index out of range exception. Next we clean stuff up and keep things about the same. No, no real big changes other than the little bit of cleanup and the validation. And that's often the case for making things right. It's usually just sometimes moving things into the proper class, making things just look and feel a little bit better, refactoring, cleaning up the code, and making it so that it does all the things that it's supposed to do and is versatile so that it's not going to fall apart if you accidentally call it with the wrong value or something else or something's not initialized. So what about making it fast? That's something I didn't actually do until right when this video came because, well, I thought, hey, I don't need to make it fast yet. And that's one of the most important things 
points that I want to call out here. You don't need to make things fast until it's the time where it actually matters. If you're not 100% sure that system's staying in, don't, don't maybe optimize it too much. Don't spend a lot of energy on it. Or if you're not sure what the system is going to look like, how it's going to morph and change. Because if you prematurely optimize, one, you could be just wasting a lot of time. And two, you might just optimize the wrong way and then make it even harder for yourself to clean up and fix things afterwards. So let's take a look at the fast version because the fast version is a little bit more complicated, but not a lot. You can see that sometimes making it fast is just really simple and you can just do it whenever, whenever you feel like it, just keeping it as a separate step there that you go in and optimize. Let's take a look at this one though. So on line 351, you see I've got this set character model fast that takes that same ID, but right above it on 350, I've got a dictionary of byte keyed tuples that have a game object and an animator. So this lets me look up by ID, a game object and an animator that are kind of put there packed together. This is a pretty common system or format. Hopefully you're familiar with it. If not though, give it a try. Try copying this code and you see it. I'll put a link for the code in the description so you can go copy all of it. So here's the set character model fast. First we do the same checks that we did in the right one. Fast also includes all of the stuff that's right. Next though on 365, instead of destroying the, ob the model object, we just set it to inactive. And then we check to see if we have the existing one or the new ID that we're looking for in this inactive models dictionary and probably should actually be renamed to all models let's let's do that control r or control r models yeah, that's how easy it is we got to keep making things better and better along the way so we're going to get the model and that will return back this tuple that has the game object and animator if it exists if we had one then we'll put our model as item one which is just the first value of the tuple so that's the game object you'll see where we set that down below and then we set that model to active and then we'll bind up the character animator assuming that we have a character animator we should always have one but that's what the question marks there for and we bind it to item two which is the animator of the second part of the tuple. Now, if we don't have this in our dictionary, if it's not a model that we've already created, well, then on 376 here, we instantiate that model. We do the same code that gets our animator, bind it up, just like we did in all the other calls. And then we add this new tuple with our game object here, the model and the animator there to this dictionary by ID. So if we access it by ID, we can assign it. We don't actually have to call dot add or, or check for a dot contains just do this assignment and then if it called it again it would actually overwrite it but it won't ever call it in because it's gonna find it up here and then the final step is just set the thing to active and then down below you can see some old code this is from before it was right when it used to set classes and other things that's all been moved over to a totally different class or yeah, yeah a totally different class called roles all right so that's it for this video and this topic hopefully it's helpful again don't prematurely optimize things. Save your optimization for when it matters. Some things just don't need to be optimized. This character switching, it eventually it should be optimized, but the way that it should have been optimized was really up for up in the air. I didn't really know what was gonna happen there. And there's a lot of code that just doesn't need optimization. Things that only happen once, they, you know, going from 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds on a one-time process, not worth my time and energy. Doing things like this though, eventually, become very worth the energy. So you got to remember to think about where it matters, optimize the things that matter only, and focus on that and don't get distracted with the other stuff. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you got a question down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and the code for this is up on the page. It's linked down in the description, along with some info about the new Unity 6 mastery course that's coming up soon. So if you wanna check that out, um, I'll make sure to link all of that down below. You can go see it on the page and uh, of course, grab this code as well, bye.